Before we get into this morning's discussion, again, this is Project Owl's open source Intel's Ukraine control map overlaid upon Google Earth. We've added our own place markers and distance measurements um, on Google Earth. That's not part of Project Owl's map. Just, uh, But basically, um, if you look at the news, it's all about North North Korea's alleged alleged entry into the Ukraine conflict. Um, to me, that's more like a political stunt by the leader of North Korea. I don't think if there's if there's three thousand, um, basically, if there's three thousand North Korean troops, whether they're engineers or you know support elements, if they're engineers. <laughs> um, logistics uh whatever I, I don't think that that's that's really not news and it, basically i think uh, the north koreans the north korean leadership knows it will make the news even though it's militarily not really news um but basically that that's where politics gets meddled into a situation on the next on the next part i don't think it's really a good idea, basically. Um, if there's pro-Ukraine YouTubers, right? A cheerful, gleeful, the 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 presentation of a cheerful, gleeful situation. I, I don't think that's productive because that all that's gonna make people think is basically, uh, all right, uh, the situation is great, uh, everything is uh, everything is hunky dory. Um, all right, you know, you have a fan that maybe buy you, uh, you basically that buys some, you know, that buys somebody a coffee or something, and then they think everything's honky dory. Uh, I, I don't think, I don't think, hey, uh, you know, in my opinion, no, uh, everything is honky dory. Um, buy your favorite channel a, a coffee, uh, Slava Ukraini. That's no, that's not gonna win the war. That's not gonna, that's that's not gonna win anything. Um, I don't know, maybe that will win, win some social brownie points, but he, that's not going to win the war. Um, but basically, we don't want to talk about legality. Um, you know, basically, people have to, you know, study the legality, but, you know, theoretically, hey, imagine, um, I, I think realism is, is something that uh, inspires moral solidarity with uh, Ukraine, uh, you know, basically, and I, I think if you're Ukraine, you're, the, the moral solidarity that you would desire, are maybe perhaps, again, we, we're, we don't give legal advice, but maybe perhaps, hey, imagine there's 50 French foreign legionnaires that uh, have had experience in peacekeeping operations, chapter, uh, basically, uh, United Nations peacekeeping um, in the field, and, you know, uh, I think Ukraine would value that type of moral solidarity. You imagine that you got 50 foreign legionnaires, and you know they 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 uh, they they uh, then they have moral solidarity with Ukraine. I think that moral solidarity is going to be a lot more useful than you know basically solidarity on YouTube, Slava Ukraini, uh, you know whatever your favorite YouTube channel is. That's not going to go into war, man. Um, but basically, uh, basically what I'm saying here is so now let's get to the heart of the measure. Um, we're going to pronounce wrong Seladov. Um, there's been big changes, right? So based on the map, it looks like Seladov whole or in part, um, it, it, it definitely appears to be under, uh, Russian control with front, with the, um, with the advanced Russian elements dated to October 27th, which is, which is damn recent. Um, it seems that Siladov is appears whole or in part to be under Russian hands, which is not good. So this is why I say, listen, don't. Uh, the, the problem with painting a gleeful, honky dory situation, um, I, I'm not saying that's propaganda, but I'm saying, but basically the, um, I, I don't think that's productive, be, simply because it's going to make every it 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 it, it makes people think. Everything's honky dory. Buy your favorite YouTuber a coffee. Slava Ukraini. The job is done. The ground paints a very different picture. Um, 
yeah, we're we're not gonna. Oh shoot, we're not gonna we're not gonna do the honk honky dory. Be your favorite YouTuber. That's our our goal isn't YouTubing. Our goal isn't YouTubing with Sava Ukraini. This this isn't this is not a honky dory. This here isn't honky dory. Buy your YouTuber fav coffee and Slava Ukraini. Everything is honky dory. That that this 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 ain't honky dory, folks. I, I don't mean to be an asshole, but this isn't this isn't freaking honky dory, folks. Are we clear? Um, but basically, I think uh, Pokrosk, this. There's a possibility of great decisive victory here because um, with effective direction of fire control, the adversarial elements still has to advance through the open. The, you have an adversary that's, that has to advance through the open. Um, this, whole, this, 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 whole, this whole sector is where the Ukrainian decisive advantage in fire control. Fire control. Um, aviation, drones, FPV drones, artillery. So basically, the decisive victory happens is because to mount an assault on Prokrusk, the, the Russians basically have to have to amass the size of force that's probably 20 to 1. And then basically, the assaulting force, Prokrosk, relative and assaulting force, this is, um, it's essentially a meat grinder that, that has the potential to completely um, absorb and neutralize the assaulting force. Basically, it, basically, it, it becomes, it becomes the point where Prokrosk, to the east of Prokrosk, the uh, it becomes this field of Ukrainian decisive victory in terms of the sheer uh, effective fire control that Ukraine is able to put down. Basically, the the attrition to the advancing force is astronomical, and even if they gain, so we put measurement. So even if they if they gain to 2.5, imagine the front, the Russian front, if the Russian front expands, salient expands 2.5 miles, the cost is astronomical. So the, the temporary gain of land results in really a tactical defeat for the advancing force. Um, Prokrosk is going to hold, and it's likely going to, basically, if the Russians assault Prokrosk, it, this is a, uh, it's it's basically it's basically going to be so detrimental to the Russian side because for obvious reasons. So what what appears to be um, territorial advances by the Russian side, the 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 astronomical rate of attrition on the Russian side tells a different story. It tells a story of 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 irrecoverable losses in terms of attrition. So you can't just look at territory and say the, uh, okay, Solidov appears to be in Russian control, therefore one side is winning, one side is losing. That's, that's not the case. There's a bigger picture in play, um, but the key thing is that Prokrosk is gonna, is, Prokrosk isn't Solidov. Prokrosk has, it, you're looking at a very different Defensive situation. I'm not going to draw a defense. The the uh, the, the I'm, I'm not going to predict the the, the uh, defensive backstop. But defense. The you bet there's probably going to be defense in depth, uh, outer defense rings, inner defense rings, um, and basically there's elements that will prevent basically some type of Operation Uranus where where. Where, where basically where where the adversary is able to outflank and mount and 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 encircle the city. I, there's there's I, I see there's little risk of encirclement. There's 
the front is holding and decisive fire control is causing decisive Ukrainian fire control has created a living hell on earth for the invader.